Uh, the politics of the budget to the actual economics and how corporate India is receiving this. Nenalal Kidva is former country head of HSBC India. Niranjan Hiranandani is a managing director of Hiranandani Group. And uh, Bodhisattva Ganguli is consulting editor with Network 18. Uh, Nenalal Kidva, let me start with you first. Of course, for corporate India, for the markets, for ratings agencies, the big headline is the fact that Despite an election in a couple of months from now, the finance minister has stuck to fiscal prudence. It's 5.8, the fiscal deficit for, for this year, and 5.1 for the upcoming year, sticking to the fiscal glide path. How may that, though, translate into what people want? Because ultimately, when people look at this budget, when I mean people, I'm talking about it from the context of elections, the Ahmadmi, they are wanting something tangible. And this is the attack from the opposition. There is nothing tangible in this budget. I think to start with, we have to laud the fact that there is fiscal discipline coming through. And don't forget, for everything that the government gets more disciplined about, the worries that we've had in the past that overborrowing by government squeezes out the private sector is, has also been a concern. So what we're really looking at in terms of the FISC is also getting capital expenditure from the private sector, pushing capital expenditure from public sector companies, et cetera, into the system. Now, if the fiscal deficit is happening, at, and I don't believe it is, is happening at the cost of social development programs, then yes, I would agree that there is a cause for worry. Is there need for more money to throw at the system? And I can tell you from experience I have been working in water and sanitation through the not-for-profit I chair, the India Sanitation Coalition, that the absorptive power of the grassroots to even absorb the funds that are being made available through the states down to the Gram Panchayat are not indeed where they need to be. So, for example, in the sanitation space, the center has released funding. Funding is sitting down at the Gram Panchayats in the state, but they are not being able to spend it. And the ministry at the Jal Shakti ministry got concerned that this money is not being spent. So has asked us to bring in private sector partners, not for the money they bring, but for their ability to make sure that these villages at the Gram Panchayat level can indeed be declared model villages by spending the money that government is providing to ensure... But, but how then do you explain, ma'am? I mean, the government says 10 crore toilets have been built, uh, 24 crore new tap connections have been given, pipeline connections have been given. How is all this happening if villages and down at the Gram Panchayat level, they're not able to use these capacities? It's happening, but it's not happening at the pace the government is releasing the money at. So okay. the issue here is that the government has a vision, has an ambition which needs to translate down at the grassroots. And they are now looking at these public-private partnerships to bring in uh, those that know how to execute at the grass level, namely the private sector, to lend a helping hand as well, which is how it should be. Okay. So the point here is that if it's not the shortage of money, it's the shortage of execution resources that is the issue, then we have to spend our energies there, not at flinging more money down uh, 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 a pipe, okay. which is not... Yes. Mr. Hiranandani, talking about the housing sector, and I'll start from the bottom of the pyramid to the top. At the bottom of the pyramid, the government claims it's run the biggest PM Awas Yojana. Three crore houses uh, for poor people have been built, and they're now trying to up that <coughs> by another two crore homes in the next five years. That's in the uh, segment affordable housing for uh, poorer segments. At the top end of the pyramid, many middle class Indians, upper middle class Indians are saying that housing has now become unaffordable. You had a COVID dip. Prices were depressed, but in the last year, year and a half, it's suddenly once again in major metros across this country, it's become unaffordable for the middle classes and the upper middle classes. What has the government done? What has this budget done to address that concern? I think three factors, Mr. Jacob. Uh, the first factor is the fact that up till now, the PMA Y scheme was extremely successful. May not be in the city of Mumbai and Delhi, but certainly in the rest of the country, it has been very, very effective. And they have successfully done the three crore houses. And these have been released through the financial institutions, which have ensured, unlike what uh, uh, Kidwaiji said about it just now in the toilet side, I can assure you that the money as far as the affordable housing scheme was well managed in terms of how it reached the persons who actually took the money. So affordable housing, we have not had a problem. The hit 
in the urban sector is very clear and we have they have managed it perfectly number 2 that in the last 6 months to 1 year the pmay scheme was exhausted as well as we had a double problem the second problem was that interest rates went up mm-hmm. the earlier affordable housing interest rates was 6.5% they are now 8.5 8.7 now that 2% hike from 6% is unbearable in the affordable segment and the emis are crossing the thing and that is why two things need to be done one we need to bring back the pmay scheme which is what they are planned to do in terms of the 2 crore housing that is there which is essential because otherwise you are going to have a problem in the affordable segment and the second part of the entire thing is to bring down interest rates now obviously interest rates have got other factors which is governed by the rbi yeah. and the other inflationary issues that are there okay. so if you do and remanage both these aspects of it i can assure you that as far as affordable housing it will spring back as far as middle housing and the luxury element of it the growth has been more than 15% compounded this year so there's been a huge increase both in terms of lending terms and others and the affordable segment will come back as soon as both these factors are connected one which is in okay. the hands of the government the other the, in the, the hands RBI. of the rbi so bodhisattva ganguly mr ganguly you know one of the headline features again of today's budget and all, and indeed the last two or three budgets has been the spend on capital expenditure 11.1 lakh crores that's an 11% increase uh, already to what has been a three and a half times jump since the modi government uh, came to power and yet why are we not seeing that it was conventionally said it's the public sector that has to lead the way as far as capex is concerned and then the private sector will crowd in animal spirits will be unleashed why aren't we seeing that certainly not to the degree that was expected yeah uh, thanks azaka so i think the um, it's true i think there is some indication that private sector investment is picking up see typically private sector investment picks up when the capacity utilization crosses a certain threshold level uh, you know let's say between 75% to 80% in most industries and i think we have reached that level in many sectors so we are seeing some investment happening we are seeing investments if you look at basic in, you are seeing investment in cement and steel in in paints in in some of the basic sectors it is true that it's less than what you what you would want also there are the uh, the pli scheme has certainly had an impact i mean we now have a huge cell phone manufacturing industry yeah. in the country a very large tv manufacturing industry in the country uh you can't uh, 10% of iphones are made in india uh which is quite remarkable up from uh, you know almost nothing some years back i mean that that's a that's a headline figure apple is an iconic company and if you look at every investor conference at which tim cook talks he has something positive to say on india which has a huge uh, you know positive uh, uh, spillover in terms of 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 brand india or brand bharat so 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 yes i mean it is it is picking up um uh, the thing also and and i want to address a criticism which is often made that these such as the iphone factories are assembly operations but you need to start with assembly i mean if tesla comes to india it will be an assembly operation to start with and then but you start with assembly and then you go deeper into you know deeper levels of competence so so yeah but i think private sector investment should now pick up and um, i mean but it's a, you know you it will happen when when investors when industry wants to invest one of the reasons which mr hiranandani alluded to in the context of housing mm-hmm. is so applicable to investment which is that interest rates are still quite high in india uh, so once the in, the you know the rate cutting cycle begins which should begin somewhere late this year provided inflation stays under control uh, then i think private investment would pick up in a in a whole range of sectors that's not the only thing i think it is happening uh but yes it has lagged behind a bit i one can't deny that uh nerlal kidbai on this point about why, how and why interest rates are still very high of course the rbi's singular concern is keeping inflation under control it's finally come to the band where it wants it to be uh, under 6% do you see interest rates coming down uh, and also i want to get your thoughts on clearly this is an interim budget it's a budget before an election they don't want to make any big ticket announcements but when they come back and if they come back in july uh what is the one big ticket proposal that you would like to see in the bud- in the full budget in july 
so on interest rates, yes, uh, interest rates uh, will begin to come down as inflation gets uh, checked. However, I should just say that we do have many inefficiencies in our banking system, including priority sector lending and burdens we put on the banking system, which makes the capital cost to industry, and this has been a historical one, high. So for Indian industry to be competitive, which is what we need, and by being competitive, we can export, by being competitive, we can grow, uh, and we can give products at uh, a price point which is attractive to consumers, uh, all costs of production have to come down, including capital. And I would just add here that costs of logistics are coming down very rapidly because of the investment in CapEx. Uh, through transportation becoming shorter, uh, through efficiencies at our ports, uh, investment in railways and roads. So we are seeing productivity increase on that front. Uh, we will see interest rates come down, but maybe not to the levels that they should because of these inefficiencies I just mentioned. And at the end of the day, uh, labor, which remains an advantage for us, all ensures that we can get to a competitive industry point but I just want to add okay. that we, we talk of private sector investment. Mm -hmm. It is critical, but I would just caution that highly capital intensive industries and, you know, you take a refinery today, it needs 200 people to run a 50,000 crore investment. So it's not going to solve for jobs, which is our biggest requirement. Got so it. if you ask me what is that one big ticket uh, item I'd like to see, it would be about creating jobs, which would be primarily, I believe, from the service sector. Okay. And the service sector, we've done well in technology. We could do a lot better in tourism, which has seen some mention in the interim budget. But I would love to see a huge, big program on how we push tourism well, and job opportunities therein. One big area, of course, where you can create large numbers of jobs is in construction, I don't know if there is evidence to show that that is happening over the last uh, 18 months to two years or so. But Mr. Hiranandani, just to take this conversation forward in terms of, you know, the big ticket reform items that you would like to see a, a Modi government 3.0 if it were to come to pass, what would that be? Because again, this government is being judged by 10 years of arguably the biggest majority that any government has seen for the last 30 years. Have they fulfilled the promises or the expectations certainly from India Inc. and from economists, etc., about some of the big ticket reforms that they could have done given this kind of political capital that they've had? Uh, Mr. Jacob, I would think that they have done quite a lot, which is quite outstanding. And number two, this is the first time I've seen an interim budget which has given the way forward that the government intends to take it up in the next year. One of the most important things is fiscal consolidation which means that more money will be available to the private sector for the purposes of picking up instead of the government picking up the money when the fiscal consolidation to the extent to which they are targeting is not there. As uh, Mr. Ganguly has also clarified this issue, uh, in terms of what is going to be available in terms of capex, this is going to be extremely important if the banks and financial institutions are able to lend over there more. As far as the uh, employment issue, which uh, uh, was just raised, the issue is very clear. The second largest employer in India today, it's not manufacturing, it is construction and infrastructure development. So, and, and believe me, let me give you a short, quick example. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 years ago, when I wanted 100 uh, uh, skilled workers, I would get 500. Today, when I want 100 skilled workers in my business, I get 20. So the amount of employment which is being generated in this sector is huge and humongous. In fact, the unemployed, unskilled workers are a big problem because they are not getting skilled fast enough to get absorbed. So it's not only the demand which is going to go up if the construction and infrastructure continues to grow in the manner in which the government is intending to do, but if they don't do parallel skilling at the same pace, of course, the private sector is equally responsible to take up this job. Okay. But having said that, we need to do that. Otherwise, you will, uh, we are having a gap where we don't get construction labor, which is skilled. It's unbelievable. You okay. know? And there's so much unemployment. Uh, I'll so, get the final. All in all, yeah. 
I'll give the final so word to uh, would be, Ms. Ms. I think we can take it to a double digit growth in GDP if they focus on infrastructure the way they are doing mm -hmm. and housing, if it is given another thing, especially rental housing and other things and slum housing can be redone. Okay. We would reach a double digit uh, growth in GDP I'll, and also answer the issue of employment. I'll, I'll, I'll give uh, Mr. Ganguly the final word. Uh, if and when there is a Modi 3.0 Sarkar, uh, some of these big ticket things that people have been talking about for the last 20, 30 years, uh, whether it is agriculture reform, land reform, labor reform, do you see them bite the bullet next time around or having tried this in the past and uh, not been particularly successful, would they stay away from these? Well, Zaka, I think most of the big ticket reforms have actually been done. The ones they could attempt are the farm laws which got, which got kind of repealed after they were passed. I mean, they could... They could try those. The other other area is to is to try and do labor reforms because it is still very difficult. Because to create employment, I think you need to um, set up you know giant textile factories, uh, you know old traditional industries, textiles, leather, furniture, which is still very difficult to do in India. Uh, it is difficult to acquire land. It's difficult to employ that many workers. In fact, again, even in cell phone manufacturing, some of the big assemblers from around the world. They want to employ, uh, you know, giant um, Ch China-style factories employing 80,000 people or 100,000 people at one place. A lot of them are women uh, because in, in China, they mostly use women. Um, they're trying, but it's quite difficult to, uh, uh, these things are very difficult to do on the ground in India. Um, and you need, labor, uh, you know, for example, in the case of women, you have rules about night shifts and stuff like that, which is, mm -hmm. is quite ridiculous. So, so. So yeah, so I think they could try uh, labor. They could have a shot at labor reforms, trying to rationalize. Uh, it is partly a state subject. BJP, however, rules many of the states, so they could achieve consensus and and attempt. So these are the two, I think the two big things left: labor reforms, land acquisition, um, and maybe uh, you know the tax, the GST is a great reform, but there are a huge amount of disputes cropping up in areas. Um, a lot of notices being served by a lot of the tax authorities, you know, GST uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe they could have a look at that also. All right. Uh, even in direct taxes, I mean, the idea was to go to uh, flat rates, maybe two or three uh, rates uh, and to simplify it. But with now the old regime and the new regime, uh, I guess it has become That's a little more complicated. So let's see if there is any uh, direct tax rationalization as well. Thank you very much uh, to all of our guests. Uh, now